Why does it matter what Christ looked like? Because Christ is not coming back for all nations. Right. Christ is only coming for the people that's been oppressed by the so-called white people, so-called Arabs, so-called Chinese, every other nation that hate God. What's your name? Come on, let me talk to you. What's going on, Big Off? You all right? I told you all last year. Huh? I told you all last year. Last year? I remember. Yeah. yeah? So what you doing with yourself now, huh? So you yeah. know that you're the children of Israel. That's what you're telling me? You know you're descended from the children of Israel? I know I'm a Christian. You know you're a Christian? Okay. That's what you say? That's what I said. So tell me, I, I couldn't hear you. That's why I had yeah, to repeat yeah, yeah, yeah. it, okay? Yeah, yeah. Come here. So tell me, what does it mean for you to be a Christian? What does that mean? Who, who is your Lord and how did your Lord and Savior look? What did he look like? You said God is a spirit. I can barely hear you. Said God is a spirit. Uh huh. So, so you telling me that? He really don't have no kind of form of body. That's what you're saying? I'm going to tell you why it matters. I'm going to tell you exactly why it matters. Because of the simple fact, if you believe that God looked like this, you ain't going to give a darn about yourself. I'm going to tell you why it matters. It matters because Christ said it matters. Give me that in John 7 real quick. I'm gonna Christ himself said, do you want to be in heaven? You want to be in heaven, don't you? You, you say you're going to heaven? There's a requirement to do that. This is what... Let, let, what's your name, boss? Mitchell? Mitchell. A requirement to get to heaven is to believe on Christ as it says. That's the requirement to get there. That's why it matters, Mitchell. Watch this. Read. John chapter 7 and verse 38. He that believeth on me. On me. This is written in red, Mitchell. So that me is who? It's Jesus. He that believe on me, what? As the scripture has said, as the scripture said, the scripture describes what he looks like, who he came for, what was his purpose. So you got to believe on him as the scripture says. Read. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's how you're going to get the understanding. That's how you're going to be able to receive the kingdom of heaven. So what, what you saying, Mitch? I, I see it all over your brain. What's going on? It just said that it matters. It says it matters. You have to believe on him as the scripture says, right? So, so does this does it say color? It does say what it's color. Give me that in Daniel 10. Watch this. No, come in. Come in, Mitchell. Don't walk away, Mitchell. We're going to read it whether you're here for bear. Read this. T Daniel 10. Let's see if it says a color of what Christ looks like. What's your name, boss? What's your name? Everybody want to walk away now. Come on, read this. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 5. How y'all doing, family? What's your name, boss? Walter? I can't hear you. Will. Okay, Will. I'm Elisha. We're reading. Mitchell had a question. He said, why does it matter what Christ looked like? And that it's, it, then he said that it don't say nothing about his color. So we're going to read the Bible and see if it say anything about that. Watch this. Watch this, Will. Watch this. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 5. Then I lifted up my eyes. And look, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen. So Daniel saying he see a man that's clothed in linen. So he got on clothes, right? I mean, you got to have a body, right? Watch this. Who loves were girded with fine gold of you fast. So he had on a golden belt. What's the name, Mark? Malik. Nice to meet you, Malik and Will. I mean, like you. Watch this. His body also was like the barrel. So he had on a green garment. Come on. And his face as the appearance of lightning. Because of the understanding he had. Read. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Because he drunk wine in moderation, so the whites of his eyes look red. Read. And his arms and his feet. So his arms and his feet, right? Now it's describing what his skin looked like, right? Like in color. Like in what? Color. Like in what? Color. Mitchell said it ain't no color in the Bible. But we just read his arms and his feet like in color to what? To polish brass. What color is brass, Will? Wait, so according to the scriptures, 
Christmas looks like what? Like us, right? But Mitchell say that it don't, it don't, it don't matter. Christ said you must believe on him as the scripture says. The scripture says that his color was like what? Light of two polished brass. Christ looked like me and you, Will. That's right. That matters. Right. You know why else it matters? Because with this image right here, Will, with this image right here, came, came supremacy. It came hatred of our own people. They brought this image in a score. Why? So that we would think less of ourselves. Right. So that when they say we three-fifths of a man, we actually believe that. When God himself said we're actually gods. Right. That's why it matters. It matters because the same, the same Christ that's coming back ain't coming for everybody. Right. He's coming for you, Will. He's coming for the people that's been oppressed. Give me that in Luke 1. Is Christ coming for everybody? Why does it matter what Christ looked like? Because Christ is not coming back for all nations. Christ is only coming for the people that's been oppressed by the so-called white people, so-called Arabs, so-called Chinese, every other nation that hate God. Read this. Luke chapter 1 verse 68. What's going on, boss? How you doing? Do you believe that Christ matters? Do you believe his skin matters? What he what he looked like matters. That's right. We ain't talking about your Bible. What your Bible say? My Bible say, love thy and love thy nature. It said what? Love thy and love thy nature. Love love thy and love thy nature. Look at you. What, what is the love? Oh, you saying neighbor? Okay, neighbor, this is what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We're loving our neighbor by teaching them that Christ looks like you. That he's coming back to redeem you. That's the love of our neighbor. Our neighbor is our people. Read that, Luke 1. Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. The Lord God of who? Of Israel. Our neighbor is Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of the so-called black. Hispanic and Native American read. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Who? His people. Who is his people? Read up again from the top. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. God's people. His people is the children of Israel. Blessed be your God. Read. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. And have raised up a horn of salvation. That horn of salvation is Christ, a so-called black man. Yes, he matters. Our Savior, we, for us in the house of his servant David. Did you hear the word, Mitchell? Did you hear what Christ looked like, Mitchell? We read the scriptures say his color like polished brass, arms and feet. Read it again. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. That's your God, Mitchell. You are the children of Israel. You are the descendants of the slave. Stop right. smoking and killing yourself. That's right. why Christ matters. Right. Read. For he has visited and redeemed his people. And has raised up a heart of salvation, which was Christ, a so-called black man. Read. For us in the house of his servant David. Because he came from the tribe of Judah. The so-called black man come from the tribe of Judah. You got Christ's blood in your veins. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet. All of the prophets prophesied about a black man coming back to redeem so-called black people. Read. Which have been since the world began. Read. That we should be saved. That we should what? Be saved. This is why Christ matters. Because he going to save us. If you don't know what he looked like, how you know who's going to save you? That's why he matters. You can't be looking for a so-called white man to come out the sky and save you when the scriptures say he don't look nothing like that. Bring it out. That's why he matters. Read. That we shall be saved from our enemies. Our enemies gave us a white man for a savior. Who the hell does that? Read it again. Save who? That we shall be saved from our enemies. Our enemies is who taught us that we three-fifths of a man. Our enemy who gave us a so-called white man told us to worship him. Why? So we can look at him as some kind of special person. He ain't nobody according to God. That's right. Read. And from the hand of all that hate us, all that hate us, 
Who hate us? The same people that gave us this image. How we know he hate us? Because he did this to our people. That's right. Is this love or hatred, Will? That's right. That's hate. To take a strong man like yourself, tar and feather you, set you on fire, tie you to two horses, and pull your body apart. That's hatred. Why does, he, why does Christ matter? Because he gonna do what? That we should be safe from our enemies and from the hand of all the haters. That's why Christ matters. Because that's who's gonna save us from the hand of who hate us. What's going on, bro? You need to get a fly if you don't got one. Because we're teaching our people that we're the children of Israel, the greatest people that walk the planet Earth. That Christ look like you, black man. That he's coming back to save and redeem you from the hand of those that hate you. Hey, sis, right here listening to the music. Come here, let me tell you something. Come here, come on around here. Come on around here. Come on around here. What's your name? Yeah. Huh? Stephanie? Yeah. I'm Elisha. Nice to meet you, Stephanie. Get one of those flies right there. Pause your music for a minute. Save your battery life. We're going over some, some historical facts to prove that we the greatest people ever walked the planet Earth. This is why we out here. A, a brother asked, he said, why does Christ matter? Do you believe Christ matters? What you say your name, Stephanie? We'll say it again. Stephanie? Yeah. Do you believe that Christ matters, Stephanie? Yeah. Do you know what the scriptures say he looked like? Good. We're going to teach it to you. Come over here so you can see this sign. Now, we read by the prophet Daniel. You ever heard of Daniel, right? Daniel in the lion's den, right? He said he saw Christ and Christ looked like what? What did he say, Will? What, what did Daniel say Christ's arms and legs was like what? The color of polished brass, right? Now, let's see what John said about him. Let's see if John... If anybody else had the same revelation, what's going on, Aunt? What's your name? Paul. Paul, come here, Paul. What's your nationality, Paul? What, what my nationality? Yeah, what nation of people you come from? Uh, well, I'm from America, but my nationality is from African descent. African descent? Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Uh, well, I ain't so, got time, okay. You got to jump on that bus right there. It's leaving you. Yeah. Okay, well, it, it ain't here yet. Come here, Paul. You need to learn this information. You done been living all this long time, and everybody got you believing that you're just African. God said you're greater than that, Paul. That's what we're trying to tell you. Watch this. Read this. We're going to read what Christ looked like, and then we're going to show you something else that Daniel said. Watch this. Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the revealing of Jesus the Christ, right? Why would he have to do this? Because of the simple fact we was given a false image of what he looked like. So, so Christ himself told him to write down and bear record what he looked like. The question was asked, why does he matter? Why does his color matter? Because if I said, if, if you're looking for a bus to come, right? You got to know what bus is coming in order for you to get on the right bus, right? That's why Christ matters. We got to know what he looks like in order to look for the right person. We're going over there right now. Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. What does it mean to say that he has wool hair, Paul? Right. Like yours and mine, right? Like yours, Sister Stephanie. Right? My brother Will. Oh, uh, right? Read. As white as snow. So it's white in color, woolly in texture, right? Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because he drank wine in moderation. Read. And his feet, his feet, read. Like a too fine brass. What color is brass? It's brown. So it said his feet look like brass, right? Brown. Let's see if it was a light brown. Was it a medium tone brown? What kind of brown was it? As if they burned and they burned. Now that's past tense. Burned. So if something was burned, what color is it, Paul? I'll be right back. It's going to be black. Oh, where you going, Stephanie? Come back here. I'll be right back. Uh-huh, you're going to be right back. You go around the corner, might not make it. I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure whatever's going on over here is more important than where you're going, Stephanie. Right. Now, why does it matter? Daniel said the same thing. Let's find out what else Daniel said. Go to 9 and verse 11. Daniel 9 and 11. Let's see who these things, because when you read John, John said this is for his servants. Right? His servants is not everybody. 
Now let's see what Daniel is saying. Read that, Daniel 9 and 11. Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. Oh, Israel has transgressed thy law. So all the children of Israel have transgressed God's laws. Read. Even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. So they didn't obey God's voice. That would mean they transgressed it, went, a, went, a, went away from it, right? Read. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. So because they didn't keep his commandments, they didn't listen to his voice, curses came upon them, right? Read. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, we read about it in Leviticus, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, right? Read. The servant of God, because we have sinned against him, so transgressing God's law is called what? Sin. Hey, Paul is on it. Read. Verse 12. And he has confirmed his words which he spake against us. So it said he confirmed his word. So how do I confirm something? By making it happen, right? right. So he made every word happen that he said was going to happen. One of those things was that we was going to go into slavery on slave ships. Our children would be taken from us. We're going to read it. We're going to prove it. Watch this. Come on. Which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. A great evil. So those curses similar to is a great evil. God said that he confirmed this great evil that happened upon his people, right? Watch this. For under the whole heaven, under the whole heaven, under this sky, what? Have not been done as have been done. What's up, huh? Watch this. Have not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. Hey, sisters over there walking across the street. Let me ask you a question. They don't want to hear the word of God. God, I, I tell you. Paul, so what Dan, Daniel said was what happened to the people of Jerusalem has happened to no other people. He said the stuff that they talking about, the great evil, is documented by the mouth in the books of Moses. So we're going to go to the books of Moses and see what happened to the people of Jerusalem. He said what happened to them ain't happened to nobody else. Right. How old are you, uh, Mr. Paul? 74. 74. That's a long time to be here, right? Yeah. So I want you to tell me, out of the 74 years that you've been living, if anybody has told you what we're about to read. So let's find out. Come, come a little closer, Mr. Paul, because I got to show you some visuals to go along with this, okay? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm in total agreement with you anyway. Yes, sir. Yeah, with, with what you were saying, I'm in total agreement to a certain extent. To a certain extent? But as you were saying about, about the, the plague, the, the, the plague that came upon us because we turned our backs on uh, on God right. instead, of following, instead of following his commandments. Right. That's why we go into what we go into right now. Right. But it's a, and, and then it's another reason why we can constantly going through this. Yeah. Because God made it that way for a sign because we wouldn't know. I asked you what your nationality was. You said African. Yeah. I guarantee. Hey, Will, what's your nationality, bro? African. Now, earlier, did I ask you earlier? No, I'm thinking about when we was at the other spot, right? African. So, I get, hey, bro, the white shirt, what's your nationality? He ain't going to listen to me. He got on a white shirt and gray pants. What's the nationality? What race you come from? What race you come from? Huh? Asian. Asian. Haitian. Right? But right here, what race you come from? I couldn't hear him. What he said. Now notice this, Mr. Paul. You and him look the same. He say Haitian. You say African. My man over here say African as well. Well, we, but uh, we the same people, bro. Right. Just because yeah, let, the world, it, we the same. Not, not. Don't get me wrong. Not everybody is the same people. Right. But the so-called blacks, Spanish, and Native Americans are the same race of people. Yeah. They the same people. Now watch this. Watch this, Mr. Paul. Give me uh 2868. Watch this. Watch this, Mr. Paul. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Yeah. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with some. Now, he's talking to the children of Israel. He brought them out of the land of Egypt. Now he's saying they're going to go back into Egypt, but with ships. Now, Mr. Paul, how did they come out of Egypt? They walked, right? Yeah. So why would they have, to, why would they say they're going to go back into Egypt with ships? Because they were, for one thing, they were complaining and murmuring after they came out that it was much better for them if they had went back. So, 
Now, what was their status in Egypt? The children of Israel. Were they ruling? No. No, they were what? Slaves. They were slaves. Yeah. The Bible explains that, right? Yeah. Real quick, Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God. Now, I know that you understand this, Miss Paul, but I'm reading it for everybody else. So Egypt is synonymous with bondage, Mr. Paul. So when he said we're going to go back into Egypt with ship, he's saying we're going back into what? Going back into sin. Back into, if, if Egypt means bondage, mm -hmm. we're going back into Egypt, which means bondage, yes. right? So we're going into bondage. Yes. How? What's the transportation? With what? Ships. With ships. Now, did that happen to anybody else, Mr. Paul? Uh, it's possible. It's possible. The, what happened to us being packed up on slave ships like this? Did that happen to anybody else, Mr. Paul? No, no. No, that ain't happened to nobody else. Keep reading. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I speak unto thee. The exact same way he said it was going to happen, right? That's how it happened. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. We wasn't going to see the landmass of Egypt again. We wasn't going to see our homeland again, which is Jerusalem. Read. And then he shall be sold unto our enemy. So when we got off those slave ships, we were sold to our enemies. Right. When it said Negroes for sale, it wasn't talking about Africans. Right. It was talking about so-called blacks like you and me. Right. So the people that sold us was who? Sold unto our enemy. They wasn't our friends. They know that. That's why they smiling. We for bondmen, for slave men. And burn women. Enslave women. Read. And no man shall buy you. So wait a minute. It say no man shall buy you. Well, how are we being sold? Because that's an old Quaker term that means no man is going to be able to redeem you out of this. That's right. The only person that's going to be able to redeem us out of this is Christ, the right. so-called black man. That's why he matters. Right. So now, that's just one thing that happened to us, right? We came in on slave ships and we were sold. What else happened to us in slavery, Mr. Paul? We were used and abused, uh, tricked and divided. You put that down. They didn't want us to know any any knowledge like like what y'all doing. They did, they kept knowledge from us because kept us from reading and writing all yeah, that good stuff, right? Because if we had that knowledge, we would know who we are anyway and probably were bound. But you know, some of us were bound, but not not everybody. Right. And, and, and one other point, you were mentioning Egypt, right? Well, America is Egypt, as far as I'm concerned. You're right. America, it is spiritual America Egypt. America is a modern day Egypt. You, you're 100 percent correct, and Paul. And we are still not complete, completely free. You are 100 percent as we should be. We are not free. You are completely. Now, you said what you said. I'm gonna read that in in the scriptures about them not wanting us to learn nothing else. Yeah. They they not wanting us to know the knowledge of who we are. I'm gonna read that in the scriptures. Give me 48. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore, thou, therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. So the Lord said we're going to serve our enemies, right? Yeah. For what? What the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. For food. And in thirst. Water, natural resource. And in nakedness. For our clothing. And in what? And in want of all things. And lack of everything. So in lack of thought, of, in lack of everything, we had to go to our enemies for it. So that means we didn't know who we were, who we had to go and ask, what's my, what's my nationality, where I come from? We had to go to our enemies. So if they would have told us that we were the children of Israel, of course we would have been like, well, dang, that means the rest of this Bible goes for us too. Right. That means that we're the greatest people ever walked the planet Earth. Right. That means that our God is our God and none else. That means when they read in this scripture talk about servants obey your master, it's not talking about them. It's talking about when we are are are, are poor and our brother is is helping us because we're poor that we supposed to supposed to deal with them a certain way. Not these dang on bastards that's beating the crap out of us. Right. Read. Exactly. And the thus 
and the nakedness and the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. That same person put yokes of iron around our neck. Right? Until when? Until he hath destroyed thee. Until he hath completely wiped away who we are. Yes. Right. Until, until the point that we're okay with calling ourselves African. Right. Do you know that that name actually come from a so-called white man? That was not that land original name. It was the land of Ham at first. Yes. And then a so-called white man, uh, Leo Skip Scipio Africanus, conquered yes. Hannibal in the Second Punic War and named that land after himself. Yes. No different from America. Yes. America Vespucci. Yes. Nation is men leading by example.